Well, it's about 10.30, and we're going to start the vlog for Monday, August 17th. I just checked, and I forgot again. I want to check it again. Yeah, August 17th. And this is the beginning of the vlog the, for, for Monday, and we'll go till Tuesday. This is the problem when you're doing a 24-hour uh, day. You take breaks to do different things. Uh, and ironically enough, I'm in the crash mode. The crash mode is when you've gone for enough to the 24 hours and you're not sleeping properly every every day or every segment of time when you sleep, you short your sleep by so many hours. It eventually accumulates and catches up with you and causes something known as a sleep deprivation crash. And it just knocks you out, and that's what I'm going through now. I'm going through a uh, sleep deprivation crash. Not a fun thing. It's, it's it, it is a sick day or or sick days, depending on how long it takes you to go through the crash. But it's a necessity that when your body needs to rest, you need to rest, and that's the crash says you can't go any further, and so you don't go any further. Anyways, we're starting uh, the day off. Uh, the, well, this vlog, this part of the vlog, anyways. Uh, uh, we finished up the Yowie vlogs. I did some work on the scooter. I did the bottom half of the seat assembly. I'm doing working on the top half of the seat assembly now. And then I have to do the uh, base plate, which is the floorboard for the scooter. That's where the seat will attach. So uh, I am on the second third of the whole project. So in terms of the... Uh, the, the seat where you have the base you have the seat and then you have the floorboard so I'm on the seat right now uh, I've finished the base and the next part will be the work on the floorboards anyways at the Yowie vlogs uh, Allie got her first car she bought her first car that was the first uh, first uh, uh, vlog because I had watched two vlogs because I've been away for a bit uh, I actually knocked out, <laughs> so I didn't watch any of the Yowie. Didn't, didn't do the YouTube stroll over the weekend the way I was supposed to, guys, because I spent most of the time just in bed sleeping. Uh, the second one, Grizzly, you are talking about size, because everybody now, because Mara, Mara is now a scientist, well, she's only got her bachelor's degree, so she's at an entry level to science. A uh, very entry level, because uh, science requires not just your bachelor's but you also have to get your you also have to get your phd and then once you've done your phd and your phd is about four years maybe a little bit maybe five years and then you have to do something known as your postdoc uh, your postdoctoral fellowship uh your postdoc period is again another four years so it takes it takes about 15 16 years to become to really become a scientist and then you enter you enter at the at the, uh, at, the at the early Stages. You're still at the early stages after 15 years. Uh, it really depends on when you get established within an institute or start your own institute. That's when you start to begin to sort of figure things out in terms of where you're going to end up, end up going. Uh, my thing, and this is what they're talking about, they're talking about uh, how science is supposed to be done. You don't just go off and do things willy-nilly. Well, yes and no. Classical science is very structured. It is very established. It, it is, you know, very buttoned down, um, mathematical, and you have to have all these formulas, and you never, you never color outside the lines. The problem is when they were doing the, the work on nuclear science for the atomic bomb, nothing worked as predicted. And so they began coloring outside the lines, and that's where they found the atomic bomb, was outside the lines. But the thing is, is that it was so earth-shattering because the complications for this coloring outside the, line, outside the lines didn't only apply to the atomic science. It went all the way throughout, and so they they've tried to keep it secret. It's, it's, it's still part of the classified dogmas. That this form of uh, exp exploration science is, is forbidden. Is it, 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 they don't want you to know it, 
And so primarily what they're, what they're teaching in school is they're teaching the classical science saying, this is how science has to be done. If you don't do science this way, you're not a scientist. Well, not true because most of our chip development, most of our technology development all occurs outside the lines. They weren't, they weren't predicted. They wasn't done within the cut and dry lines of science. And if you go back into the history of science, this is what you'll find more often than not, that, that the advances in science, the so-called discoveries, were not predicted. They, were, they occurred by accident. It was someone who was who was doing what they weren't supposed to be doing, coloring outside the lines, and this is how I got into my to, to my research is that again, you know, well, if all these all this research is being done, all these discoveries are done outside the line. Well, what's outside the lines? And so I took the quantum mechanics perspective of the random walk, which means you have no particular direction. It's it's, it's it, the the the, the structure now because I've been doing it for 30 years so I do have a somewhat of a structure for it you have with the classical science you have the hypothesis meth hypothesis uh, method observation and conclusion where if you don't have if you're doing a random walk then there is no hypothesis you're just going out to go out there's no particular purpose to it and if the knowledge you're seeking is actually infinite in its nature in other words, you, you can never achieve the actual knowledge. You can approach it in terms of have some understanding, but you can never achieve it. So then there's no, there's no conclusion. So all you have left is methodology and observation. So most of your stuff is simply observation. So what do you believe? Well, I don't know. I've, I did some stuff. I saw some things. This is what my experience was. No conclusion because I haven't got to the end yet. I don't think I'll ever get to the end, but I haven't got to the end yet. And this is this is what drives you this is in, into the state where you're working, where you work, your research, your uh, middle school for life, uh, the tween, your, tween, the infinite tween. So that's where you are in, in your understanding of the world. Uh, there's no end to it. This is this is what it is, and but it also what it's also what drives you forward. You want to know, and so it becomes like a, like a it becomes like a computer game. Let me f five more minutes, five more minutes, five more minutes, and before you know it, uh, uh, it, it you, you finally get to a not the end, but an end point where you can stop. And this is in two o'clock on the two o'clock in the afternoon. You've worked all night, you all all the way through the night, and that's where your conclusion is. Well, it is time to end the vlog at 7.16 on Tuesday morning, August 18th, I think. Yeah, let me just check again. I just checked it, but I forgot going through the numbers. Yeah. August 18th. It's hard. It's hard to keep track of the days. I am doing this twenty-four hour thing. It's still going on. I am going through a crash. This is the part of the crash day. Uh, and this is where you have to where I, where I work on before, and I always work on I work on it on a regular basis. And this kind of works into the Yowie vlogs that I just watch in terms of how they manage their lives. And Allie's now planning, now that she's got a new car, she's planning to move out to California. And so these things are in the works. So of course, Branson has moved out of the house. He bought a new house. We haven't seen it yet, but they were in the process of doing these things. Uh, all the vlogs are at least a week behind, if not more, in terms of uh, uh, what you're seeing. In other words, the day you're seeing the vlog is not current. Uh, it's usually the week prior. Uh, I'm about three weeks out. I'm about a month behind. Uh, I am trying to catch up, but things keep the crash. First there was a food poisoning, then there was the crash, and so that's put me that's put me uh, three weeks behind. Wait, wait, a week for food poisoning, a week for the crash, and there's your three weeks. 
But anyways, there is a ways to catch up because I'm only vlo I vlog a single day on Saturday and Sunday. And so if I put up a vlog on Saturday and Sunday at the same time, that sort of, you know, vlog seven days a week, vlog six days a week, put one, uh, put, and, but put up a vlog seven days a week. And that sort of eventually shrinks the, uh, the distance between the current and the, uh, and the, uh, the, the filming date. I'm going to keep it about a week out so it's not too far. And it, it, it's often difficult because we are uh, ending the day. Uh, uh, we started on Monday. We went all the way till, till now. And it's not that, that, that I did a lot of sleeping. It's, it's, that's the thing. Is I haven't, it's not that I haven't done a lot of sleeping. But again, it's broken up. It's not a straight sleep. In that time, uh, I actually ended up finishing the scooter. The scooter is now charging. Uh, I did some cleaning. I got some more of the cleaning done. And of course, I do my gaming. I've got my gaming to do. I've got basically the gaming takes anywhere from twenty minutes to an hour, depending on what has to be done. Uh, I'm playing Lords Mobile, and this is a more complex thing. I've had to drop all, uh, in, in, as, as Cyborg Alpha, I've had to drop uh, all the games except for Lords, uh, Lords Mobile because it's so intense that there's just no time for everything else. Uh, so, I think, I think you, 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 your gaming is, you have a choice with gaming. It's a lot of risk to make gaming your life to become a professional gamer based off the fanfare of the gaming. Even professional sports players don't don't gamble and, and have their entire life based off of their celebrity. They do other things. They have other sort of backing interests that, that allow them to stay within the celebrity sphere. But they also know their time that, that they're going to disappear from the celebrity sphere. They're not going to be celebrities forever. Unless, of course, something comes along and it allows you to do that, but uh, gam uh, ba well, uh, gambling on that is not a good thing. So you have to have other things that will back it and it, it, that will sort of uh, make sure that you're okay even, even during the times where things are not going so well. And so you have situations that can make you down. If you always look at the things you failed at. Like I failed to do the two uploads a day, every twelve hours. I am getting an upload every day. I'm getting am getting an edit every day every day. I'm doing that, but I'm not doing the two uploads a day. I did succeed at finishing the scooter. It's now charging. That's it. But if I looked only at the negative oh, oh, what I failed, that's all I look at is my what I failed, then I'm gonna have a very negative attitude. If I look at the successes and accept the successes for what they are, successes, then that makes things a lot better because, yeah, okay, I have negatives, but you see, here's the positives. And it balances your view out. So it's not an issue of, of, of what your worth is. It's an issue that you have to push through things even though you may, you may and, and more often than not, you will fail at things. There's a lot of failure involved. You, you actually get into the tech industry, you get into the defense industry, a lot of these, they call these scientific industry. Look at all the scientists out there. Why do they, why does a company that, that, that's building something, new technology, have so many scientists? Because the risk of failure is so high, they need all these different scientists to go through and try different things. And that's, that's what Canyon was doing. Canyon tried something, he didn't know specifically what he was doing, but he tried it. And that's what a lot of science—a lot of science—is trial and error. The, the old days of theoretical mastery, or the, that the mind is superior to everything else, that the mind is superior to reality, that mind creates reality. That's long gone. The world we're living in today that produces the technology that we have today is the world of the experimentalist. It's about allowing the experience to dictate what you know. And the direction that you're going to go into next. And the thing is, for a lot of people, that's not fun. 
because there's a lot of risk involved. You don't know whether you're going to succeed when we go down a particular path. You may have to, oh, you may get to a point and say, oh, you back up, you go back and down another path. Or sometimes you'll go back and forth on the same path trying to see if, there, if there's a way to resolve the problem. So you won't move at all. You just go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But that's the nature of the thing. If you're a type of person who is a more loose person, more, more like, like a, we'll call it a surfer personality, you know, like a surfer personality, where you're more hanging loose, you know, you know, and you're able to control yourself to a certain degree, you don't, not, you're going to wipe out, but you're not afraid to wipe out, uh, then you'll do well. If you are a very buttoned down per person, very rigid, needs things well defined, then you're not going to succeed in business. You, that your your best your best place is at a nine to five job, but a nine to five job that's going to have a lot of its drawbacks. So it's your choice. Business means risk. Where a job, an employment means no very little risk, but not so much fun. And it was. I said, it doesn't matter whether you're worth it or not, no refunds.